Hey guys, my name's Gotlin and I'm one of the WAN boys. You probably heard of my brother Gok and obviously Papa WAN. Today I'm going to be showing you how to cook barbecue spare ribs with a honey glaze and aromatic barbecue sauce served with Asian slaw. So there's a couple of things you're going to need for this ingredients. Okay, this is for a nice big heavy pot. So we'll get rid of the lid for a second. So these are nice locally sourced pork ribs. I popped in to see the butcher this morning and I got him to prep these up for me and he's cut them all into a nice bite-sized pieces. Well, if you're a big Chinaman like me, bite-sized pieces. There's a kilo worth of meat here, which is serve around about four people or two of me. So I'll get these into the pan. And what we need to do now is give these a quick rinse off. The reason being is I wanna add a little bit of moisture into this. So when it's marinating and it cooks down, it creates a nice barbecue sauce. And this is the nice aromatic sauce that we were talking about. Okay, we've got spring onion. Spring onion is always followed by brother ginger. Never serve the two alone, okay guys? These two go together. If you use ginger, you use spring onion. If you use spring onion, you use ginger. So, we're gonna take our spring onion, chop off. Actually, you know what? We don't need to chop off the end, so I'm gonna chop it in half. Chop it in half again, and just give it a bit of a crush. Now the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to release some of the oils and again it's just going to sit in the bottom of the pan and create that lovely flavour Okay, as we're cooking through. Ginger. So we're going to take two nice thin slices. Okay. And we're going to pop these into the pan. Now, garlic. Suppose you can call this the sister to the brothers of ginger and spring onion. We only need two cloves. And again, because we're gonna sift off the juices later, I can leave these with the skin on. So again, I get a bit of a crush, okay? Just to release some of those juices and some of those oils, and I pop that into the pan. This is the fish sauce. A little bit weird, I suppose, going into a pork dish, but the reason we're using it is because we're not adding salt. Also as well, it's gonna add that depth of flavor. Now, there are four elements in Chinese cooking, and if we learn to master the four elements and bring them harmonious together and combine them and we create a uh, the perfect dish and we become the master chef so this is going to help with that the four elements we've got color so again the food has to look fantastic the next element is um, aroma now the food has to taste fantastic you know as you breathe it in as you're cooking even before we get cooking it should make your mouth water then we've got taste. So again, the food has to be tasty. It has to be either salty or spicy or sweet. And the last thing is texture. So again, with the Chinese, you've got velvety, you've got smooth, you've got crispy, you've got juicy. So again, if we're able to combine the four elements together, we become master chefs. Well, so Confucius say anyway. Five spice, so again, aroma. In it goes. Star anise, okay, and this is going to give it that aniseedy flavor, okay. And these are just going to sit in that juice as it's cooking away and give it that nice aniseed flavor. So, in they go. Then we've got cinnamon stick, and this is going to offer that slight warmth as we're cooking. So, we're going to take this cinnamon stick, we're going to break it in half and pop that in, okay. I felt like Ainsley Harriet then, <laughs> that's a bit weird. So, with the rice wine again, this is fermented rice, in that goes. With the yellow bean sauce, it's fermented soya beans, just like the hoisin that I'm gonna show you in a second. Oh, it smells sweet. Oh, it smells like Chinese cookery. You walk into any Chinese takeaway, Chinese restaurant, and this is what you're gonna smell. So again, we're gonna put this in. If Papa Wan was here, he'd be picking up a rib, and he'd be making sure that this was clean before, before we even started cooking. If you're gonna cook barbecue ribs, you need hoisin sauce. You probably know this from when you have your duck and pancakes, the Szechuan duck, this is what you put on your pancakes. And again, the barbecue smell is fantastic. So we're gonna add this in. And we're not gonna waste any. Make sure we get it all. Okay guys, now that all the ingredients are in the pot, and again, you can see the water at the bottom there. Okay, we need to massage this in now. This is gonna give that meat that sweet, tender, it's a velvety, smooth taste. My mouth is juicing up already just talking about it. So I'm gonna put a glove on for this. Again, you haven't got to. And we start massaging all of these ingredients together. Get it right in there as well, don't be shy. Now I'm gonna add the sugar. Again, you can put this in at any time. 
I just want to make sure that every single one of these ribs gets a covering of sugar because this is what's going to give the meat that nice sweetness and tenderness. These are, these are truly going to be the best ribs you've ever tried. Time to put the lid on and pop it into the fridge for at least two hours. If you can, leave this overnight. Just need to get these into the oven first, okay guys? So, lid off. Oh wow, that f the, just the smell coming off of that. We were talking about aroma and those four elements. But it's, yeah, my mouth is watering. Um, I wanna create some cooking liquor. Okay, so I'm gonna use some chicken stock. Now again, you haven't gotta use chicken stock. You can use poor man stock, otherwise water. But I do wanna add a little bit of moisture in here, okay? And I'm gonna use quite a lot because this is gonna cook down. And as it's cooking, I want the meat to stay tender and juicy. Okay, and um, I want it to a point of when you bite into it, you're not having to pull the meat away from the bone. It's literally gonna fall off into your mouth. And I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a move around. I wanna make sure that this marinade is well and truly mixed in with the stock now, okay? I'm gonna cook this with the lid on, which is important because I want this to steam, okay? So it's gonna boil and steam. The first hour, hour and 20 minutes realistically is going to be wet roasted okay or boiled or broiled is whatever you want to call it in the oven and again this is going to create that juiciness of the ribs and it, the meat is going to fall off i guarantee it so we're going to pop the lid back on and i'm going to pop this into the oven it's at around about 160 180 okay and i'm going to leave it for the first 40 minutes unattended okay so lid on in the oven 40 minutes i'm going to show you how to do asian swirl so in we go I've chopped my cabbage, that's already in the pan here. What I'm gonna do now is peel my carrots. And we'll get these out of the way. So again, just using the peeler. Okay guys, so we're just taking this down into a nice fine grate now. We've just put the chunks over there. It's a bit easier when you've got a larger carrot. So we can just probably do this in one go now. And uh, so we're just injecting colors. Again, food has to look appetizing. Um, looking back at cookery programs from yesteryear, um, it makes me laugh a little bit because the brown, <laughs> everything was brown. If you cooked something, it, it was brown. Whereas now we've got HD TV and so forth, it needs to look appetizing, you know? I need you guys to be thinking, oh, I need to try that because it looks great. Just to save time, I can put this straight in there now. Just need a little bit for this recipe. So I'm just thinking, okay, we'll do that. Give it a bit of a flatten and then we'll slice it long ways. Just watch your fingers, guys. So some nice spring and you'll get through there. In that goes. We need a thumb sized piece of ginger. So I'm gonna take about that much and I'm just gonna give us a quick peel. And what I'm gonna do, because um, this is quite fibrous, um, I'm gonna grate this off. And again, I've got a small grater. So I'm just gonna grate this straight into the bowl. So if I bring the bowl over, Wow, the f smell is amazing coming off of this ginger. Right, there's the red chili done. Now the green. This I'm only putting in for one reason only and that's to give it some heat. I like it hot. This is my dish. You can leave it out by all means. We'll just chop it into small pieces. And again, so each mouthful that we get of this slaw, we're gonna get that little bit of heat and that little bit of chili flavor coming through. Papa Wan taught me to do this. Gets all the flow, gets all the juice out of it. I've been cooking a long time and um, there are pictures of me when I was five years old working in the restaurant with a little dicky bow on. I think that's where we all started off. But my dad used to love the fact that it was a family run restaurant. So when you went into, when you came to see us, you came to see the family. You didn't just go in there to eat. You were friends, even though you were customers and you were eating. And I think that's something that you just don't get, you just don't get in this day and age, you know, going back into like the late seventies, early eighties, you came to eat with my dad, you were at his house and that's what it felt like, you know, so. Nice and gently, we, only don't, we don't want to take the pith or the white bit underneath, we just want to take the top bit. So we just, smells fantastic. Sit there now with a nice large white rum Maybe a bit of coconut. Wow. This is the beauty of cooking. I mean, I think cooking, um, the smells just evoke memories and places you've been before. And again, we're just gonna chop this in half. Bring the bowl back over so you can see what's going on. Hand over, you've seen this before, everybody does this. 
And again, I'm just going to squeeze the lime in. Oh, no pips. The smell is fantastic. Two tablespoons of sunflower oil. In that goes. Two teaspoons of mascovado sugar. That's going to give it that molasses kind of deep depth of flavour and the sweetness as well. Okay, and I'm going to go over onto the stove and I'm going to dry roast these. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to heat up a non-stick pan and I'm just going to pop these in and give them a bit of a shuffle around as we're doing it. Heat's just coming up through now. So I'm going to pop the sesame seeds in and I want these to be golden brown before we even think about taking them off the heat. Anything cooked with a bit of love and a little bit of care um, is going to be far better than trying to rush it. Sesame seeds are done. Handles hot, so I'm going to use a bit of a chef's trick and we're just going to make me an oven glove. Okay guys, so hot toasted sesame seeds and we're just going to pop this on top. Okay, now, if you notice, I've saved a little bit of top, so I'm just going to put this on the top when we dress in a second. So, we put that over there. The only way we're going to do this properly is to get our hands in there and to feel that ingredients. You can feel the oil coming through into the carrots, into the cabbage. Make sure that sugar's incorporated, because so I want that sweetness with the carrots and that mascovado sugar. And at this stage, I'm going to add about half of the salt. Again, we did this, and again, so there's a teaspoon of salt there, so I'm going to put about half in for now. And we'll give this a good mix. Okay guys, and we're just going to give this a bit of a taste now. Mm. Half, half a teaspoon was plenty, don't need any more salt in there. The lime juice is just cutting through the oil, it's fantastic. So, we're going to put this to one side, and then we're going to look at our ribs in about 15 minutes, so we shall see you in a second. Ribs have been in for 40 minutes now, so let's give them a quick look. We need to baste them and guarantee the top might have gone a little bit dry. So we keep them moving now for the next sort of like 20 minutes, half an hour. While we'll make sure they're nice and juicy. So, oh wow, and the smell is absolutely fantastic. So you see all the juices in there, the star anise, the spring onions wilted down. What we're going to do now, we're just going to move these ribs around just to make sure that each one has been cooked in this liquor at the bottom with these cooking juices. I'm going to get my lid and in again for about another 20 minutes and again I'll do exactly the same thing in 20 minutes. So we'll take the lid off, give them a move around, make sure that each of them have been sitting in that sort of like liquid as they've been cooking and that's going to make them nice and juicy and fall off the bone. Ribs have been in there for an hour and 20 minutes now so we're going to get them out take them out of the cooking juices and um, give them the final roast with the honey glaze now. And put them into this tray just for a second. I mean, you can smell the depth of flavor coming from those, from that five spice and from the star anise, from the cinnamon, the sugar, the hoisin sauce. What I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna sift this off into a pan. So again, this is just normal saucepan, nice sieve and we just, Sieve, sieve it out so we've just left with that barbecue sauce and this is where the final 10 10 15 minutes now we will brush them with honey there we go and we're just going to literally brush each one of these ribs with the honey and we'll do this twice so we're going to do this twice so they, they, they go in the oven for around about eight minutes now and i'm going to leave the lid off we don't need the lid on now so we want the heat to come all the way around these while that's cooking away, there's the natural oils that have come out of the pork. So I'm going to skim that off. So I'm going to let it cool for about another five, ten minutes first before I do that. And then we'll use the corn flour and water just to thicken it off. And then we'll be ready to serve. I can guarantee they will fall off the bone, be super juicy. Uh, now we're going to let these rest for about five minutes just while we make the barbecue sauce. So if we come back over here, and all we need to do is thicken this up. So to do this, proper Chinese fashion, we've got two tablespoons of corn flour with some water. And all I'm going to do, as you can see, I'm just combining the corn flour with the water. And it will thicken very quickly. Let's turn the heat up a little bit. Okay guys, so look, 
There's the barbecue sauce now. You can see I've just sticking that up. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to pour this into here. I'm going to be able to dip our barbecue ribs into that as we eat. We're going to take our Asian slaw and we're going to heat this up on the bowl next to it. Final sprinkling of sesame seeds. There we go, guys. We've got Chinese barbecue spare ribs with a honey glaze, an aromatic barbecue sauce with Asian slaw with toasted sesame seeds. I hope you enjoy it.